Let's verify Stokes here for this uh, vector field F. And S is the graph of Z is equal to four minus X squared minus Y squared. Uh, Z is greater than or equal to zero oriented with the uh, normal vectors pointing upwards and outwards. Okay, so what's going on here? What's going on here? Well, let's go to work with Stokes' theorem. We have to verify it. We need to do two separate integrals. We need to do a vector line integral around the boundary here. What's going to be the boundary when, so this is when z is equal to zero. So that zero is equal to four minus x squared minus y squared, or x squared plus y squared is equal, is equal to four. So the boundary here, we can parametrize with R of t is cosine t, uh, sorry, two cosine t, two sine t, and zero for t between zero and two pi. Our prime of t is negative two sine t, two cosine t, and zero. Okay, so we've got uh, these two things here. We know we need f of r of t. Okay, so let's see here. y gets replaced with two sine t, and z gets replaced with zero. x gets replaced with two cosine t. And f dot r prime, so this dot this gives us, let's see here, uh, negative two sine t times two uh, sine t is negative four sine squared t. And then this gives us negative four cosine squared t. I think this is going to give us negative four then. So our integral around the boundary of f dot dr is the integral from zero to two pi of negative four dt is negative eight pi. So when we do, do the other calculation, we should be ending up with negative eight pi. Okay, so now we need to find the curl. So we aren't, aren't going to integrate f itself. We need, to we need to find the curl first. Okay, and so what do we end up with here? I hat times the partial derivative of y respect to, okay, that's just going to be zero, the, minus the partial derivative respect to z of z minus x minus one here, plus j hat times the partial derivative respect to z of y, that's zero, minus partial derivative respect to x of zero, okay, that's zero, plus k hat times partial derivative respect to x of z minus x, that's minus one, minus the partial derivative respect to y, of y, that's minus one. So our curl here is negative one, zero, negative two. Okay, so we are, we are finding the double integral over our surface S here of negative one, zero, negative two. We need to parametrize the surface here this is a graph of a function. So we are in this case down here, where f of x, y is four minus x squared minus y squared. So r of x, y is x comma y comma four minus x squared minus y squared. And let's see, what else do we need here? We need a cross product here. R sub x cross R sub y is the negative of the x derivative, which ends up being 2x, negative of the y derivative, ends up being 2y and one. Okay. Uh, now, so then we end up with negative one, zero, negative two, dot product with this, 
gives us negative 2x minus 2. Okay, what is the region that we're integrating this over? We're integrating this over the region x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 4. And so actually, the way that I'm going to do this, the way I'm going to evaluate this integral, is by converting this to polar coordinates, because this corresponds to theta runs from 0 to 2 pi, and r runs from 0 to 2. So this integral is going to be theta from 0 to 2 pi, r from 0 to 2, of negative 2x becomes negative 2, r cosine theta minus 2, and r dr d theta. Okay, so we just have to evaluate this, make sure we get negative 8 pi, like we should. Okay, uh, let's see here. We're going to break this up into two, well, first let's distribute throughout the r. So negative 2r squared cosine theta minus 2r dr d theta, integrating with respect to r gives us negative two-thirds r cubed cosine theta minus uh, r squared, and plug in uh, from zero to two. And so this is going to be negative 16 thirds cosine theta minus 4. Now when we integrate cosine theta from 0 to 2 pi, we'll get 0 here, and so then we'll just be left with negative 4 times, neg times 2 pi, and lo and behold, we do have negative 8 pi here, as desired.